Dr. L. M. Singwe, a prominent member of the Jain community, is the Indian High Commissioner to Great Britain. As the senior advocate for India's Supreme Court, Dr. Singhvi was elected to the presidency of the Supreme Court Bar Association Trust, the highest legal honor that can be conferred on any individual in India. Indeed, he is generally recognized as one of the greatest judicial minds in the history of his country. Whether as special rapporteur for the United Nations or legal delegate for UNESCO, Dr. Singhvi is a much revered activist in the arena of human rights. What is ahimsa? First of all, it is non-violence in word, deed, and thought. Non-violence in words, deeds, deeds and, and thoughts. thoughts. You must not torment anyone. You must not oppress anyone. You may not even insult anyone, because that's a form of violence. Mm. You must observe restraint. You must not waste the resources of the universe, because mm. that is, waste is a form of violence. This is the basis of Jainism? That's right. Uh, Jains declare that the greatest religion, the greatest creed, the greatest commitment of man on earth is non-violence. Mm. Ahimsa, paramo dharma, the highest religion. And of course, a more practical interpretation of this is the minimum of violence. We're not talking about the present world. Yes, we are not, and yet we are, because uh, in the Jain perspective, which is a perspective of realism, you must not ignore the reality of life. Mm. You must bring to bear upon it your precepts, your perspectives, your commitments. And that is why Jainism is important and relevant and valid today, even more mm -hmm. than in days of lesser violence in the world when it was developed. Of course, it's a very ancient tradition. Jainism goes back to many thousands of years ago. Lord Mahavira was only the last of the Tirthankaras. He was the 24th Tirthankara, and he was a senior contemporary of Lord Buddha. Mm -hmm. Now, that was in the 6th century. In essence, then, we have an ancient treasure chest to unpack what nonviolence means. It's interesting uh, that you use that expression, treasure chest. In fact, Thought, philosophy, ideas are the treasure chest of civilization. Mm -hmm. Nonviolence is a very vital contribution to civilization. And from the treasure chest of the Jain tradition and philosophy, you find unfolded uh, the story of civilization. The first Tirthankara. Adinath, Rishabhadev, for instance, established agriculture. Agriculture. How does nonviolence? Now, agriculture is relative nonviolence from the days when perhaps humankind lived as beasts of prey live mm. by killing. So it's the difference between killing an animal and growing a plant. That's right. Now, that is the relative nonviolence. It is true that some violence is involved even in agriculture. What? Uh, when you are growing plants, you are, uh, by the very act of plowing in the field, life, some forms of life are taken. But this is relative nonviolence. You're talking about nonviolence at every level of life, not just nonviolence to humans. That's right. This is important because what is unique about the Jain tradition and the Vedic tradition is, and the Buddhist tradition is, that they empathize with all forms of consciousness, all levels of life. It's not just human being. You have a particular shape and form. You are bipeds 
But that doesn't mean that quadrupeds are, do not have life. That does not mean that they do not have an awareness of pain and happiness. But James went farther. Modern science now tells us that plants have life. But thousands of years ago, James developed a concept of life in which they clearly identified that plants have life. Now, that is a lesser level of life that is a lesser dimension of life. But you have to practice relative nonviolence. 